Hello everyone, I'm Matt from Matt's Bookshelf, and today I'm doing another writing video. You might remember my last video where I went depth as to why I think the writing criticism on booktube is flawed. Well, here I am with another writing video. This time I'm talking about my writing habits and my process and things that I do that help me personally. And I hope that with this video, if you are having trouble writing or finding a schedule or just getting into the crap in general, that maybe trying what I do will help you. And if it does, great. And if it doesn't, well, at least you tried it. So all cards on the table, I have one novel done. It is over 200,000 words, which is about 682 manuscript pages, if you follow the rule, which is like 300 words per manuscript page. So it's almost 700 manuscript pages. And I would like to start looking for a publisher within the next few months. I have other writings online. I've written film and television reviews and I worked for a travel writing agency where I wrote travel articles in 2019. And as of right now, I'm working for two companies where I proofread and edit. One is with books and nonfiction books and whatever they have to edit, and the other is for resumes and LinkedIn profiles. So I have a lot of experience with the field of writing and editing. And again, being optimistic, I would like to think that I can hopefully get a publishing deal within the next few months if I start looking and saying that the book is good. So, you know, fingers crossed there. But anyways, just want to let you know that, just to start off, that I'm not a published novelist, but I am an aspiring one. It's something I've been working for for ever since high school. So probably about eight years or so. So I think the first major thing that defines our writing process, which when I'm going into detail here, I'm talking about the things that helped me write and finish my first novel, and that is writing in journals. I love to write in journals so much, for first drafts, that is. The reasons for that is first, in like a weird, intangible level, I think I connect to the prose more when writing it on paper and pen. When you're writing on a Word document, it can feel very mechanical to me. You have the constant distractions of word count, page count, the time, the internet, everything on a computer that could possibly distract you from writing, whereas when you're writing on a journal, you don't have those distractions. You can shut up, you can choose to shut off your phone, you can choose to have your laptop far away from you, and it's just you and your journal and your pen and your thoughts. I'm not talking about journaling in the traditional sense of writing what I'm doing every day. I'm talking about actually, like the whole first draft of my novel was written on paper, and I transcribed it from that paper into a Word document. And I think that's another big advantage. So first of all, you have the personal level, the personal connection between you and the prose when you're writing on paper. Second of all, because everything on the journal isn't good, I'm going to clarify that. It's a first draft, it's terrible. And not to say that anything I've written now at this point is anything particularly good, but it's better than what it was when I wrote it on paper. But that's part of one of the advantages is that when you are transcribing your work from paper to Word document, you are basically forcing yourself to do a whole rewrite of your work. Just as some backgrounds, I had basically the whole novel done prior to COVID, so about a year ago. It was about March when I got called home from school for my last semester of college. And at that point, from then on, I was taking those journals and typing up my work and then putting them, typing up my work onto a Word document on Microsoft Word. And in that process, I was forced to think very critically of what I was writing because I did reread a lot of the stuff in my journals and I have edits scratched out on them. But physically having to retype your own stuff really makes you think more critically as to what you're writing. And when you have a lot of blank space to continue to write on your Word document, you feel more willing and more free to add things when you see, as you see fit. Because when you're writing in a journal, it's a lot more difficult to add things or to, per, to, to provide critiques to your work because you have maybe this blank space margin at the top to, and then some of the space between words, uh, between one line and the other line to write some advice. But when you have that Word document, you have more free room to, you know, experiment with any additional diet, with any additional ideas you want to add, with any rewrites you want to do. And I think that having it on that journal just allows you to imagine yourself reading it for the first time as you're typing it up again. And it allows you to have more fun with the editing. And obviously it takes more time to write out your words on paper, um, especially when you're like me and you don't hold your pen the right way and <laughs> you can cause serious harm to your hand when you're writing for long hours on end. But I think that it's worth in the long run because you get that more close attachment. You, you're free of the distractions. And best of all, journals are more portable than laptops. I took my journals whenever I went to other places for long periods of time. So for example, 
when I did my summer seminar in Oxford at Trinity College, there was this really great green field out in the back of the university. Now I'll provide pictures of it here. But I spent so many hours in the summer on that lawn, under the trees during the summer, and then looking at the garden across from me and enjoying the peaceful environment that gave me so much free time to write whatever I want without any stress. And I think that environmental switch-ups can help you out a lot as well with your writing. And a lot of my influences on the chapters that I wrote at that time, uh, a lot of the backgrounds, a lot of the settings in those chapters are very inspired by Trinity College. So take that as what you will. And I think that if I only wrote on laptops, I won't have that sort of experience, which I cherish dearly now almost Oh my god, almost two, basically two and a half years later, almost three years later. So there's that as well. I've seen the idea of creating a schedule being tossed around a lot on AuthorTube and BookTube with, with advice for writing and how to get you to become a better, more consistent writer. And I think that scheduling is good, but also scheduling is not... I don't particularly have a set time where I like to write. And I don't think that would be particularly helpful for me if I did have a set time. But scheduling in the sense that it helps you to write every day, definitely, I use that a lot and I find it to be very helpful. For example, with how I schedule things, for years, ever since I was young, I like to drink tea and I like to drink tea in the afternoon. So within the past year since I've been home, when I drink tea, I would force myself to write or edit at that time. And as time went on, the two things became so associated with each other that when I was drinking tea at around three, I would feel kind of absent or feel kind of empty without writing at the same time. It would feel strange to be drinking tea and not writing while I'm drinking it. And it was a good way to sort of, you know, condition myself into writing regularly every day because it was tea time, therefore it's writing time. And it didn't mean, oh, it's three o'clock, therefore I have to do these things. It's, oh, when I feel like having tea, I'll have it. And then also at the same time, I'm going to be writing. And if you have things you already like to do during the day, like your relaxing time, I would say, you know, try to write during those things. Like if you have tea time or coffee time in the afternoon, you know, try writing at that time and then try doing it more often and more often to the point where when you have that time and you're not writing during it, it feels kind of weird and you want to write. So I've gotten a lot more writing editing done because of it. And it doesn't, and then you don't have like the problem of being, oh, it's four o'clock. I stopped what I'm doing to do this. It's, it's just something that I want to do. I should also say that I find writing to be very fun to begin with and I write regardless if I if I drink tea or not but just having that associated time has programmed me into doing more writing and I don't think I would have had as much done or had as much editing done had I not done that to myself. This is kind of a weird statement but more things come out of writing with the schedule than just becoming a better writer. A lot of my fans and the fans of my friends Mark and Tyler all for the most part like classics like classic novels and I'm going to compare that to reading classic novel. Think of the first time you read a classic novel. It was probably very intimidating. You were probably kind of a mess uh, mentally, you know, worrying about your your own you know brain capacity in order to read a more complex piece of work. And you, perhaps when you were in that moment, you would be intimidated. You would find excuses not to read it because you didn't feel like you were ready at that moment. But by the time you got to your fifth classic novel you read, you were probably more comfortable with it. And by the time you got to your tenth classical novel, you're probably so comfortable with it that it didn't make a difference to you at all if you're reading this book or you're reading uh, like a kid's book. It was just second nature to you at, by that point. And I think the same can be said for writing. When I was first getting into a regular schedule of the writing, I didn't have a regular schedule because I was always procrastinating doing it. It's It can be very intimidating because you look at the great writers of this time period and you look and compare it to your own work and your own first chat, it's like, wow, this is absolute garbage by comparison. And you know what? Especially for me, it definitely is by comparison. <laughs> but just like reading classic novels, the more you write, the more you know what to expect going into writing, and the more confident you are every time you write. You don't lose the fun of writing, at least for me, but you also don't feel the intimidation or the feeling that you don't that you're not worthy enough to do this thing. And I think that is an important part, an important hump to get over with writers because I've known a lot of people who want to write but then don't. And I think if I compare it to myself, because there was a lot, of, there was a long period of time where I wanted to be a writer, but I never wrote, and that was because I was so intimidated by the idea of writing and not knowing where to start that I just never would do it. And the same can be can be considered for me with reading the classics as well. You know, they're very intimidating, but the more you do them, the more comfortable you are, and the more 
active your brain is when it's not so concerned as to your own qualifications to reading or writing. When I write now with the comments that I have, I find that the prose comes more naturally to me. I'm more willing to critique myself and when I'm editing, things just make more sense as to what I need to edit to make the book better. Because the truth is, there is no right mental space to get into reading. You need to earn that in a way. You need to do that through practice and getting comfortable with something. It's like playing guitar. It's like reading a hard book. It's like doing playing any instrument or getting into any sort of hobby. It just takes time. And I know people have said that a million times, but it's just true. You know, you need to get comfortable with what you're doing. And when you get that comfortability, once you earn that certain level of confidence in your hobby or your craft, it's just so much easier and so much more fun to do. And I like writing more now than I ever have. And it's because I do it all the time now. And I'm just so much more um, mentally liberated with what I'm doing in my writing and so much more confident in what I'm doing that I know what I'm doing and that I can make the best book I can possibly make. There's a very famous quote from George R. R. Martin where he talks about authors and how they're divided by architects or gardeners, architects being ones who plot out their stories point by point and then stick to that plot and then stick to those elements through and through to get their novel done. And then there are other writers who are gardeners who plant seeds, which is basically letting your imagination take you through the story and experimenting and not being afraid of failure and just kind of going whatever direction feels right at the time, from what I understand. And George R. Martin is my favorite author. He's my most influential author, but we have completely different viewpoints and philosophies on writing. He is a gardener and I am an architect through and through. I love to plot point my writing so much. I love brainstorming. I love putting bullet point ideas down. It just floors me in weird ways. <laughs> and there's a reason behind it. I'm gonna get into that. It's because for me, writing things down helps make your imagination seem more tangible. When you are so focused on remembering the things that you want to write about before you actually get to write about them, your brain space is too filled with memorizing things than it is trying to find new ideas, from what I gather. And that's just how it works for me. When I write my ideas down, bam, it's written down. I don't have to worry about it again until I actually get to writing about it. And then my brain is free to think of other things in the meantime. Whereas if I was so concentrated on remembering something, I'm going to write 10 chapters from now and not actually write it down, then that's just brain exercise that I don't need. That's wasted. And that's just how I feel. But that being said, I do love plot points and plotting things out. But when I'm writing, I am completely okay with going off in different directions that seem that I did not plan out to begin with. So... It is important to find the balance between, arch being, between being architect and gardener. Some people like to be gardeners with little elements of being an architect in there, and some people find helpful to be architects with elements of being a gardener. Me, I'm more of the latter. I like plotting things out, but at the same time, if things go in different directions while I'm writing, you know, hell yeah, I'll just go for it. Who cares? Experimenting is great, and some of my best work comes from experimenting. And finally, I'm just going to go into the fear of failure. There really is no fear of failure yet when you're writing because when you're writing, you have pretty much all the time in the world, unless you're on a deadline, you have pretty much all the time in the world to fix your stuff. This has been said a million times, so I'm just going to repeat this for, you know, simplicity's sake, because it is important um, that you shouldn't be looking to write your masterpiece, like, on your first go. You should be willing to recognize your own flaws. You should be willing to experiment with different ideas and seeing where they go and not being afraid to fail at them because... Especially when you're writing on a Word document, you can just delete anything or edit anything, you know, within a second or two. You know, there's no real time waster there in the long run. And when you experiment, you are able to test your own creativity in ways that you wouldn't be able to. If you're forcing yourself to stick to a certain writing style or plot that you have in your mind. If you're trying to write that masterpiece, you're going to, you're going to focus on other works that you think are masterpieces and you're not going to throw away and find your own voice. And I think that is something that... I fell victim to for a long time when in my writing, and now only recently as I found my schedule and my confidence that I'm more willing to find my own voice in my own writing. Especially if you are reading your own work, you, in theory, you're the only one who's going to read your work until you want someone else to read it. So don't be afraid to make mistakes because you'll be able to critique your own work and say, oh, this is cringe, I should get rid of it, this is bad, I should get rid of it, or I should go in this direction instead. 
And then when you feel confident with the work that you have, give it to other people to read. So don't feel like your first draft is going to be seen by millions and millions of people because it's not true. It's just not true at all. And you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't just publish your work as soon as you have your first draft done because I've learned so much through my writing in just this year alone that the work that I had been writing for years and years ahead of time has changed so much. This book that I've been writing for years and years has changed so much that it's almost a whole new entity than it was, let's just say, two years ago. And I'm so glad that I took this time to edit, to enjoy other works, books, movies, TV shows, what have you, to help influence what I have and what will hopefully be published soon. So that's my video. Hope you enjoyed it. I want to do more videos on writing. It's kind of weird for me right now because, again, I'm not a published writer, so I feel kind of weird about doing writing videos when I don't have like the background or the resume to really back that up. I'd suggest that you check out my other video on writing. I'll put it in the description below. It's a problem with, with writing by SimpleTube. The point of this video is not to tell you how to write things. I'm going to clarify that. I'm not telling, I hate videos that tell you how to do world building, how to do character arc, how to do dialogue, because for the most part they're written by people who aren't actually writers. And also, it limits your creativity because someone wants to feel like they're superior to you and like they're a know-it-all in writing when they don't actually have that much skill to begin with. I'm just giving you my habits that I think help me and that might help you with your own writing if you're struggling or if you're just looking for new habits to begin with in general. I'm never going to tell you how to write a specific thing because that's up to you. No one told George R. R. Martin to write fantasy in the way he did. He came up with it on his own through his own influences and his own love of the craft. So... And I leave that to other writers to find their own passions and not be swayed by people on the internet who want to pretend like they're know-it-alls because they are not. So yes, I have other videos on my channel which you should check out. I recently did part one of my Road to Ulysses video. Portrait of the Arts and Man video will be coming out within the next few weeks or so. I'm loving the book so far, so I'm looking forward to that video coming out. Check out my friends um, Trunzo and Tyler Talks. They both have really great videos. I will link them in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think of my writing habits and what your writing habits are in the comments below because I'm very interested. I'm always up to experimenting with new ideas, especially right now during during the pandemic where I have more free time to do that. And yeah, so thank you so much and goodbye.